All right. I'm, uh, I'm kind of into it today. <laughs> I'm kind of having some fun today. So look, um, how the hell do you even start like analyzing underwriting these large commercial assets? Um, you know, we could, we could train on that for 24, 48 hours and it'd still be unanswered questions. But uh, what I am going to do right now is talk to you about what's called the Trinity. Uh, some of us call it the Holy Trinity, the, uh, the Earthly Trinity, whatever you want to call it. But there are three numbers that um, are critically important uh, to a commercial asset. Uh, what these three numbers do is they give us a, a real sniff test onto a go, no go. So if you want to take some notes, it could be kind of fun. It's kind of like being the teacher again, but um, there's uh, three numbers that we look for, and those are called the, uh, the cap rate or the capitalization rate, the cash on cash number, which is your return on investment. And then we also need to talk about what's called the DCR or the DSR. That's the debt coverage ratio or the debt service ratio, depending on who you talk to. Um, I kind of put a little PowerPoint together. Um, I'm, still, I'm still trying to figure out this technology stuff, but I think I'm doing pretty good. I know how to shake hands, kiss babies, raise money, buy assets, but uh, this technology world is, is kind of interesting for me. So um, we'll go through these numbers. I'll, uh, I'll, give you the, uh, I'll give you the formulas. I'll give you a little taste of, of what it looks like so that uh, we can see simply what it is that I'm talking about. So um, first of all, the first number we talk about a lot in, uh, in this asset class of, of commercial real estate is, is the cap rate or the capitalization rate. Uh, like I said, the next number we'll talk about is the cash on cash number and then the debt coverage ratio. So there are three metrics. Uh, these are the ones that we focus on big picture. Now, please understand that this is, this is like kindergarten. Um, but once you get into these numbers and you begin to understand, then we can, we really under, there are multiple, multiple levels to this. There are so many areas where the inexperienced investor or the I can do it myself investor without any help could very, very easily um, run into some substantial challenges and problems uh, resulting in, in a loss of capital. And as we know, that's, that's not the name of this game. Capital preservation, capital growth, hedge the downside. So let's look at these numbers. So the cap rate or the capitalization rate. You know, for, for somebody who doesn't understand commercial real estate, this can be a little bit of a confusing number uh, because basically what it is, it's um, a rate of return, uh, shall we say, of what an investor would pay for in a marketplace. Now, what do I mean by that? In residential, for example, you know, it's easy. You do comps, beds, baths, square foot, pretty pictures, et cetera. In the commercial world, because a, a piece of uh, multifamily uh, is based off of its cash flow, how much money does it bring in? Um, it's not always easy to do the comparable sales. So we start to analyze based on the, on the trinity that we're talking about. So as it says on the, on the slide there, um, the cap rate or capitalization rate or rate of return that an investor could expect on the deal expresses a relationship between a property's value and its NOI, net operating income. Uh, calculation does not include debt service. So I'll give you an example. Um, if I'm doing a transaction, do I want a high rate of return or a lower rate of return? Do I want a 10% return or a 4% return? Most people would say 10%. I want a 10% return. Well, there are markets in the commercial world where the cap rate or return trades and sells at about a 10% return to the investor. But there are other markets in the United States of America, Boston, for example, where the, the uh, multifamily cap rate is what we call compressed. New York City is the same way. Um, think of the, the higher price markets. Well, that compression of cap rate says, hey, an investor would spend more money, tens of millions, but would be okay with a compressed rate of return or cap rate, 4%, 3.5%, 3 cap, 4 cap is the way that they would work those numbers. And that is what it would regularly trade at in a marketplace. So we use this as a barometer, as a, as a quick sniff test, like I said, to see if we're, if we're on point. Now, how do you determine what properties trade at in what market? Well, that's your research, that's your due diligence, that's your commercial brokers, that's your other investors, that's your banker, uh, who can give you a number that, um, you know, these asset classes would sell at in a, in a specific marketplace. So the way we determine the cap rate of a property at the time we purchase it is with the formula that you see in front of you. You take the net operating income, uh, not including debt service, and divide that by the purchase price of the asset. So 
if I've got a net operating income, let's say it's a, I don't know, a 200 unit apartment complex and I got a net operating income of $1.35 million and my purchase price at time of, of analysis, if I'm, if I'm running the numbers on this, is 15 million. Well, as you can see, hey, that's a nine cap or a 9% rate of return. Now, if they regularly trade higher than that, at maybe an 11 or a 10, then maybe I'm overpaying for the property. However, if they trade in this, this marketplace at a six and a half or a seven, and I can buy it at a nine, well, now I've got a two point spread or a margin in there. Looks like I got a good deal. Okay, a good deal. So capitalization rate, net operating income divided by the acquisition price will tell you what your percentage cap rate is at time of acquisition. Now, we're all familiar with this one cash on cash return or, or maybe return on investment. Um, the way that we calculate this number, the second number in the Trinity, is we take the annual net cash flow or positive cash flow, it might be referred to, and we divide that by the initial cash investment that went into the deal. So that's everything that is not um, debt service. So uh, maybe you raise capital through a fund like we do, maybe you do a syndicated deal. Uh, where you've got multiple investors coming in, whatever that cash out of pocket, not mortgage, um, is is what we would consider to be the initial cash investment. If we take those two numbers, that gives us that cash on cash return. So as you see, net cash flow is an all bills paid or a positive cash flow amount, and it reflects the true rate of return when divided by the capital investment into the property at the time of purchase. So not rocket science, simple formulas, simple numbers to give us a, an idea of where we are. So if I've got the, uh, the positive cash flow in this example was 103,000 and we raised 950,000 um, to, to, to put a deal together, well, that's a pretty nice rate of return or cash on cash return, which is why you can see these higher targeted returns um, in a professionally run fund like ours we can put these projections in place going forward. So that's our second number. That's our cash on cash return. Now, every property um, will or will not qualify for conventional lending. Uh, as we know, uh, post COVID interest rates are redonkulous to put it quite frankly. Um, and the ability to finance now is actually um, very, very attractive. It's very attractive in the marketplace. A lot of investors are going through refinance and, and um, getting rid of the, the existing debt and putting new debt on it at a lower interest rate. So how does a building qualify or not qualify for a, um, uh, for a loan? Uh, we use this. It's called the debt coverage ratio, the DCR or debt service ratio. Some people refer to it. Again, there's that number, net operating income. Uh, I learned from, from a guy who, who kept it simple. He used to say to me, Dave, you live and die by your NOI. Every dollar that we increase value, uh, increase cash flow in a property, we increase the value of the asset. Every one dollar that we decrease expenses, we increase the value of the asset. And when I began to wrap my head around that, I thought to myself, that's where I, that's the sandbox. That's where I want to be. I can share that experience with other people. So anyway, net operating income uh, to see if it qualifies for a bank loan. And you would then divide that by the annual debt service, otherwise known as a mortgage payment. So how much do you have to pay every year in mortgage payment debt service? Um, that's the number on the bottom of the equation and then the net operating income. So it's the ability of a property, as it says on the slide there, to generate enough annual uh, cash flow um, to, cover, to, cover the, to, to cover the mortgage. And then the bank says, hey, for every $1 that you have to pay a mortgage payment, I want to see an additional 25 cents coming into the property. So that's why they use the 1.25 as the debt coverage ratio, 1.25. So for every $1 in income, the bank requires an additional 25 cents. Depending on the asset, depending on the class, depending on the neighborhood, you can see some variables in the DCR. Uh, some banks might go up to uh, a 1.3 or even a 1.4. There might be some financiers out there who can lower the debt coverage ratio. Um, you know, I would be wary of that. If you're lowering the debt coverage ratio, it's a tight deal in the first place. I always uh, kind of like the idea of if it's good enough for the bank, then it's good enough for us. Does that make sense? So if you looked at that in a calculation form, you got an NOI 1.35, you know, bringing in 1.35 million every year. And yet I have debt service mortgage payment, which equals 900. 
that would bring me in with a debt service of a 1.25. So again, just think of that along the lines of for every $1 I have to pay the bank, the bank wants to see an additional amount of capital coming into the property. So look, it's, um, it's a great day in the neighborhood. I know we've gone through some, some tough times and we still are going through some tough times, uh, you know, financially, socioeconomically, um, socially, but, um, you know, it's, it's, it's always moving forward. You know, if you're lateral, if you're going backwards, that could be a challenge. So I always, always love the idea of moving forward. So remember the Trinity, cash on cash, debt coverage ratios, capitalization rates. And if those numbers all line up, here's what happens. The scars open up, the scars, the skies open up, and the light comes down, and you hear, you hear this sound. No, you don't do that, but you pay attention when those numbers line up. All right, take care. We'll see you on the next one. Bye.